his new book comes out next week. It's called Little Victories, Perfect Rules for Imperfect Living. Uh, although he may be just as famous for that tweet last week. Yes. This is 25 words. There they are. There's a guy in this coffee shop sitting at a table, not on his phone, not on a laptop, just drinking coffee like a psychopath. <laughs> And I think I first saw, I think I saw it not long after he tweeted it, and I, and I was laughing, and it only had a couple of retweets, and then... It's been retweeted 33,000 times. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, millions of people have read that tweet and responded to it. Yes. I guess it struck a Starbucks chord with everybody. <laughs> so, I guess Wall Street Journal, great, but I guess... Let's welcome Twitter star, Jason Gay. Thank you. What are we? Aww. Jason, your book, it's a Halloween treat. Oh, and, 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 and snacks. I brought snacks. Are you, are you, uh, happy Halloween, Jason. <laughs> what? Are you? <laughs> what? What? Halloween? Oh, Halloween, yeah. I got, can you even hear us in tomorrow. there? Oh, uh, sorry? Can you hear us in there? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. OK. Thank you for the nice words about my tweet. <laughs> that was a really great tweet. Wasn't it, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you think about that tweet for a while? Yeah. I was the psychopath in the coffee shop, just sitting there. That's like when everyone Thank does you. the overheards, but it's really what was happening inside of their own brain. Exactly. And you know, you mention all the retweets, and you know, because of Twitter's royalty policy, you get a dollar for every retweet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you afforded this costume. So I bought this $33,000 shark costume <laughs> on eBay. Uh, would you like to do a costume change, or are you wearing that for the duration? You can't talk to a man in a shark costume, no. Pat? <laughs> I, Pat, I've been watching you on TV for what feels like a generation. I, I, you can they, handle this. I think you're up to it. I totally can. I just don't want you to be uncomfortable. I thought, I thought maybe the gag was what's, out of the way. What's not to be comfortable? <laughs> Is this the Katy Perry shark from the I was going to okay, ask so, that. So it occurred to me, I just thought I was ordering, um, you know, basic adult man shark costume. <laughs> But it turns out to be this like pop culture signifier, basically from 2014. So it's not even like a cool shark costume. Yeah, it's like so last year. I have I sense that Pat's not vibing on the shark look. No, I like the shark. Okay, and the audience okay. loves it. Okay, all right, as long as they're happy. So if you're a shark, what are your kids gonna be for Halloween? Uh, well, I have a three-year-old who is. Um, vacillating between being a cow pig and a pig cow. Oh. What's the difference? Yeah. Oh, Pat. <laughs> uh, basically, a, a cow pig is a cow body with a pig nose. Oh. Okay. Got it. And a pig cow is a pig body with a cow nose. He has both costumes. <laughs> And so, like Elton John, he could actually like switch halfway through Halloween. Yeah. Wait, did you Wait. obviously you read the story about, and I'm gonna blank on his name, Harbaugh? Harbaugh. Who yes. his theory is? Yes. He's a football coach. And yes. He has a theory. His kids should wear two separate costumes. They go out, they get the candy in their neighborhood. They go home, they switch costumes, they go back to the same houses. Right. Right. It's like he strategizes and plots out Halloween you as can if get, you can get candy it's his... for at ten bucks at Costco. <laughs> yeah, but he Just, wants. And they, and they get too much candy anyway. Oh. Do you think that that's sort of gaming the system and it's sort yeah. of a manipulation of the ho uh, the ho I almost said the Hollywood spirit, the Halloween spirit, <laughs> the Hollywood spirit. But I think I think good for him. Why not? Uh, Jamie, that is totally unethical. <laughs> To go back and get candy from the same people? You can't do a costume change and go back and get candy from the same people. You that, know, beat the that's, system. That's other kids' candy. Other kids will find Jason's their instinct candy. on this is totally right. What is what is the trick-or-treat cutoff? What is the age? Like when do you like? Well, clearly, I'm not sure however old you are. Ah. 
I need to know by tomorrow at 6. Yeah. <laughs> we'll check with our sources and let this, you know. So, so the book doesn't weigh in on the trick-or-treat cutoff age? The book has no opinions about Halloween. That's for Little Victories, too. Yeah, that, we're going to get into all that. We should say that the book, it, people might think that it's going to be sports-related throughout, but it's really about there's all different life events. You talk about your dad, you talk about your, I think it's your mom's aunt who lives in this beautiful, wonderful place. Yeah. And you talk about all these things that happen, like at an airport. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. yeah. Well, yeah, you, you say that you don't think that any of this, I'm yelling at the, the person in the line. Yeah. Is, none of that is effective. Yeah. Well, I spend a lot of my life because of my day job writing sports in New York's Cathedral, LaGuardia Airport. Right. <laughs> It is and a thing of beauty. There is isn't nothing it? in the life of a New Yorker, and I know this is something you guys are interested in. There's nothing in the life of a New Yorker that will quest make you question your decision to move to New York like a solid four hours in LaGuardia <laughs> Airport. You don't even need that long. And it's, it, it is a laboratory of the most antisocial behavior you've ever seen <laughs> in your life. Oh, wait, which when, is. When we did this trip to Florida on Sunday, it's six o'clock in the morning, and already there's some guy yelling at the lady at the counter about right. something that she can't do anything about. Right. And I'm like, that's way too much anger for 6 a.m. Absolutely. I was on a flight not that long ago where it was going to, I, I, it was going to Tampa, and it was a JetBlue flight. Uh, so maybe this was JFK, in fact. But they were, they were flying, to, and, and they had made an announcement before boarding that the TVs didn't work. Uh. And you would have thought they said, there's no right wing. <laughs> right. <laughs> because people then hit the outrage button. People are like, one woman gets up there and goes, what is the goddamn point of flying to blue? <laughs> <laughs> but what you say, you say in the book is, None of your rage is worth it. Well, this is the thing about rage, but especially airport rage. It never works. It's an O for rage. If we felt that rage like curling up in a fetal ball and saying that you thought you were going to get to Detroit by 2.30 and you missed your connection and screaming and knocking over stuff worked, do it. Right. <laughs> but these people are trained, professionally trained, to, to ignore, ignore it entirely. And in fact, go out of their way to make you do nothing and go nowhere. So it's just, a, it, 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 it's a reverse strategy. It accomplishes the exact opposite of what you're hoping to accomplish. Jason, my, uh, my wife's in the room. And uh, Jamie, Jamie's, Jamie's husband's in the room. Uh, I, I, I want to discuss one of the other points in your book. Because you say, no gifts means no gifts. Yeah. Mm. We have a marital difference of opinion on oh, this. Okay. Oh, OK. So when you get an invitation that says no gifts, that says no gifts, you're like, we got to stop somewhere and get something, right? That's you, no, or your sure. wife. She believes. Sure, I said if it says no gifts, you're, you're totally off the hook. What's your price range on a no gifts gift? <laughs> can we get? Can you shout it out? Forty. Yeah. Wow. That's my gift range. <laughs> That's my gift gift range. Uh, no, I, I, I... You don't I, think you still have to do a bottle of wine, a flower, a something? Listen, I, I don't want to really under, un, uh, you know, underline what a misanthrope I can be, but my favorite kind of party is the party I'm invited to and it gets canceled at the last minute. <laughs> like, I've agreed to come. I'm going. They are excited that I'm coming, and then something comes up. Hopefully, non-emergency. It cancels. Mm -hmm. You get the goodwill of having RSVP'd and saying yep. you're going, and you can stay at home in Netflix. <laughs> and I mean that in the stay at home in I Netflix, was say, and not the meme stay at home in Netflix. Netflix and chill. <laughs> no, not that kind of show, Jamie. <laughs> should, should we talk sports for two minutes, or is there anything? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go right over to City Field and sit in the press box in this thing right after this. So I'm going to be it's like me next to Roger Angel. and. Uh... But are you a Mets fan? No. <laughs> well, well, as, because... As a national sports columnist, or do you feel like you can freely express fandom? I don't yes, think yes. I know well, hey, listen, I, at the risk of alienating every last person here, you know, I grew up in a 
New England Hamlet. I'll come right down and bite somebody. I watched the Patriots game last night. You did? I kept thinking to myself, and this is off topic, but I kept thinking to myself as an Eagles fan, when the Eagles are watching the Pats play, like a game like last night, are they thinking, oh man, we got to get our act together? I think if an Eagles fan is watching a Patriots game, they're like, what is this sport? It's totally different. Like the, they, they throw the ball and somebody at the other end catches it. It's amazing. Is this Aussie rules? Okay, do we have another guest coming out? Oh no. Kansas City's up one to nothing, bottom of the first. Uh. Yeah. Downer. Downer. Uh, uh, Jason, uh, you, as much as you find the quirks in New York City, you like it here. I do. I mean, growing up in a New England hamlet, <laughs> you, I feel, I feel New York City is a city where the, 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 the common DNA strain, uh, strain is FOMO, fear of missing out. That everybody, especially anybody who moves here, has had fear of missing out their entire life. And if you live somewhere else, especially if you live in a quiet place, like the middle of the ocean. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> no, it's more like this. Oh, oh. It's more like this. I'm sorry. Um, shark expert. You see New York City and you just think fun is being had that you are not part of. And moving here, the irony is you move here, and then you don't do an effing thing. <laughs> no, no, I did a lot, you know, for, but, but what I love about it, I love that even if I'm not having that wild life that I may have had when I first moved to the city, people still have it. You know, the whole notion of like, oh, New York City ain't what it used to be, no one does this, no one, they're doing it. They're just doing it maybe in a different place and in a different way than you are doing it. And the reason I know this is that something I've adopted as I've become a geezer is riding my bicycle. And riding my bicycle oh. very early in the morning. Oh, well, that's when a good you, time. And when, so when you ride your bicycle early, and I'm talking like the sun is coming up on the Hudson. Well, you, don't okay? have to talk about, you don't have to talk about early with us. Oh, that's right. That's right. You, that's, you guys are like, you're, you're punching out. Yeah. Right, yeah. So you're riding your bike down the Hudson on like, and I like to go Saturday morning, and there's a whole group of New Yorkers still having Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. especially over where you are, you know? So like when I pull up to Chelsea Market each morning, well, sometimes if I don't have a regular driver and I'm getting in a cab, they're like, oh, where, Dream Hotel? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Dream Hotel. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you see people in clear club wear. Yes. In heels and whatever else. And it's, it's, it's obvious that, you know, couples have made decisions at oh. 4.45 in the uh. morning, let's walk over and to the West Side Highway and watch the sunrise. Oh. Jesus. And, and, and I just love that. I love seeing that, the beautiful you vomit on the that. West Side bike path. Part of the fabric of the I city. I mean, Sunday morning, okay? Halloween is on a Saturday night, okay? It's, it's going to be really crazy. A oh, Saturday wow. night in New York, Halloween, the combination is just spectacularly toxic. You will... <laughs> If you go about your traditional Sunday activities, especially in the early in the morning, you will see a man in a vomit-stained shark costume, not me, walking down 2nd <laughs> Avenue. It's just a guarantee. But you'll also see that in February, and that's what I love about New York. <laughs> Round of applause for Jason Gay, everyone. There's, there's, there's the book, Little Victories, Perfect Rules for Imperfect Living. Out Tuesday. Out, Out Tuesday. Tuesday.